Well, hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mädel and hopefully I've got something very interesting for you in store today. But first, this is actually my first video ever, so I'm very happy that you're here today. But I also want to apologize for the startling and probably very obvious lack of any kind of quality. I unfortunately don't have the money for proper recording equipment and due to my ADHD and autism and chronic fatigue, I also don't have the kind of emotional bandwidth needed to actually get into the weeds and study this. So hopefully I'll get better at this in the future and hopefully for now it's good enough. So without further ado, let's get into the actual video. So if you clicked on this video, you're probably aware that we're currently right in the middle of a very uh, publicized, very highly publicized trial between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, two actors whom you might have heard of, might not have heard of. Maybe you know Johnny Depp, but you don't know Amber Heard, maybe vice versa, which I think is improbable, but possible. Um, and uh, currently Johnny Depp is suing Amber Heard for defamation because of an op-ed that she wrote in the Washington Post. Now I won't get too much into the details of the trial, maybe I'll drop a little bit here and there uh, as this video progresses, but for now uh, I actually don't want to get too much into it because what I want to get into is something that became really apparent to me while I was watching the trial. So, so far I've watched all the live streams there are uh, at a very, very amazing channel called Legal Bites. They stream the trial live and uh, give amazing commentary. They have lots of amazing guests. I honestly can't recommend them enough. Uh, I'll, uh, maybe I'll put them down in the description uh, so you can check it out because they are, they are going to be far better at giving commentary for the actual trial than I could ever hope to be. Um, but during the trial, there have been some recordings of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard that have been played to the jury. Um, and I, I'd say they were, they were pretty clear to me. Uh, now this is not a trial where they have to determine, um, whether Johnny Depp is the victim or Amber Heard is the victim. Uh, obviously, uh, if it's a defamation case, that's not really the subject. But it's been very apparent that it's kind of a big theme in this trial. Because it's a defamation case uh, about the op-ed that I mentioned, where Amber Heard claims to be the victim or survivor, whichever term you prefer, uh, of uh, domestic violence and domestic abuse. So. For that to be defamation, they kind of implicitly have to show that uh, those allegations are false. To me, it's very clear that she's referring to Johnny Depp, even though she doesn't mention him by name in the article, but that's all what they're talking about in the trial. Uh, but the thing is that Amber Heard has been claiming to be the victim of uh, domestic abuse by Johnny Depp for six years, if I can still do math, 2016, yeah, that's six years ago, uh, when she filed for divorce with a bruise, and a very small bruise, I have to say, here on her cheek, uh, that was in all the papers back then. Uh, and ever since she's been alleging that Johnny Depp had abused her and over time the stories grew and it was not just physical abuse, it was also sexual abuse and, um, yeah, it's it's been getting getting kind of out of hand. So even though it's not the literal focus of the trial, implicitly the question is kind of who was the abuser and who was the abused. And the reason that I want to dig into some of the recordings that were played, that were used, is because I think we can learn a lot from them. Uh, I think that there are a lot of psychological concepts that people aren't uh, as aware of and as a result uh, a lot of red flags go unnoticed and a lot of people keep um, unfortunately uh, become victims of, of abuse and I obviously want to give a trigger warning I should have done that earlier but 
as I said, I'll get better at this in the future. Um, hopefully, I'll also get better at saying um a lot less. Hopefully, it's not too annoying. So, where was I? Right, well, I just completely lost my train of thought there. That is probably going to happen uh, another few times. Maybe if in the future I get better at actually recording this and working with the programs and such, I'll uh, be able to go back and find what I was talking about and continue on that line. But for now, I'm sorry, I don't have the bandwidth to do that. So I'll just rewind a little to 2016 when these allegations came out uh, because at first when I saw it I didn't want to believe it because I've been a fan of Johnny Depp's work since well since I was a teenager and I'd never gotten the feeling that he could be uh, capable of such a thing but then again I had no reason not to believe I had no reason to believe it and I had no reason not to believe it because simply thinking oh, it's probably not in his character when you're talking about a big celebrity is a little problematic because most of what we see we see through interviews and such and uh, that's not really someone's natural environment uh, I mean you would probably act different too if there was a camera on you I'm acting different right now because there's a camera on me so that's, that, that makes it kind of hard. So that's why I'm really happy that these recordings exist because ever since I've heard these recordings, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, 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 I have no doubts left. Now I want to make sure that I say that I'm always open to be proven wrong. I'm, I, I always leave the door open at least a little bit because as of right now, with all the evidence and information that I have right now, it's pretty clear to me that Johnny Depp was the victim here and that Amber Heard was the perpetrator. But you never know, there could always be some kind of new evidence that proves me wrong. And if so, I want to know because knowing the truth to me is more important than my ego. Obviously, I'm still human, I still have a confirmation bias, but I try to correct for it as one should it's it's totally fine to have a confirmation bias we're, we're all human we all have one as long as we try to correct for it as much as possible so if there's new evidence presented that totally proves me wrong it'll need some adjusting I'll need some time to process it but I'll do my best to believe it but right now I'm like that has to be some evidence so that brings us to the reason why uh, I wanted to dig into this recording and that's because this recording it's two hours long and I haven't listened to all of it I've only listened to the first half hour as of now but it's two hours long and to me it's in a nutshell a very uh, a very clear overview of the dynamics within their relationship and especially when you're talking about power and I don't mean power in the sense of controlling and dominating someone but I mean power as in just who has the who has the higher the higher ground no that's something different I'm completely screwing up my idioms but gen generally in relationships you want to be equals but sometimes and actually often it's little unbalanced. So what I want to dig into with this video is psychological concepts and mostly gaslighting because it's very very present uh, in this video and instead of giving only a broad overview I want to dig into the actual interactions and explain a little bit about what's really happening uh, under the hood so to say. Obviously I can't look into their brain uh, I can only look at clusters of interactions, I can only look at patterns, I can only infer things, but I'll never be able to say to tell anything for sure. So please know that whatever I say in this video is just my opinion and it's just my impression, but it's not fact. So don't quote me on that. Don't say this is what's happening. 
because it's just it's just my impression and I'm basing that impression on a lot of things I know about uh, relationships and about social interaction but I'm not perfect either I'm gonna make mistakes so I can tell you that so uh, first of all well now first of all we we're way past the first of all next I'd say let's dig into the actual video now I've got it over here which is actually just YouTube but behind what's recording on my camera I see that I haven't rewound it back to where we need to start uh, I've got a transcript right here I'll uh, put a link to both the video and the transcript in the description below the video so you can uh, if you don't like my scrolling or don't like watching my face which is fine that's your prerogative you can uh, read along yourself uh, I'll be using this transcript more as a guide it's not a perfect transcript well it, it she says so herself it's not a perfect transcript uh, but hopefully it'll help just a little and I'll be able to, to point to certain things and it can kind of help you hear what's being said so my plan is to go through this entire two hour long recording front to back I'm not gonna do that in one go I'm gonna do that in different parts uh, I don't know how much time there will be between uh, actual uploads I have absolutely no idea this is my first video this is my first time doing anything like this on YouTube uh, I don't even know if anyone will even watch this uh, but well I can keep talking for a very long time let's let them to do the talking all right here we go I thought, I thought that we had some sort of game plan. I, I told you I, what I needed. You said we should make this, but yet you don't. I've seen the counselors now. It's not alone. You know. We gotta change how we do things, and I want to trust you. And I feel like all the trust is gone. All the fucking trust is gone in the relationship because you keep splitting. I, we it, fight together. No but you're the only one who splits, and I I want that back. But you, you there's no trust. There's nothing. Then maybe about. there's then maybe there's nothing to talk about. All right. So. Up to this point, they're talking about uh, how to fix the trouble that they have in their relationship. So as the title already says, this recording was made somewhere in September 2015. Uh, they were married since February 2015, February of that, that year. So it's seven months earlier. Then in March 2015, there was an incident in Australia where Johnny Depp lost, his, uh, lost the top of his uh, middle finger and this is in September and as Johnny Depp has uh, testified to in the trial there have been a lot of fights and there have been a lot of recordings of those fights and this is just one of them so up till now they're talking about how to fix the things that in 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 their relationship now it seems to me very obviously that uh, Amber in this case um, I mean sometimes I'm going to say Johnny and Amber sometimes I'm going to say Depp and Heard or use their full names whatever uh, so Amber Heard is at this point well, complaining is a big word but stating that she has trouble trusting him because he keeps splitting as she says and what she means is that he whenever there's a fight in her perception whenever it gets tough he leaves now in his perception uh, he leaves because he feels like if he doesn't it escalates into a fight in, and into a big fight and eventually into a physical fight where it was often uh, Amber who was the instigator and Amber who was the one um, escalating and as you'll, hear, as you'll hear through this recording he stays calm while Amber is the one kind of more uh, 
more more active and more aggressive and I don't mean in a violent sense I mean in a conceptual sense of which direction the energy is going if you know what I mean if you don't put it in the comments I'll try to explain it better so she is telling him that she has trouble trusting him because he leaves whenever uh, they have a fight and she feels and we'll see that a couple of times in the recording I've only listened to the first half hour but she feels that he abandons her when 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 he does that and uh, that's not that's not entirely his perception he's just trying to uh, extricate himself from the situation before it escalates too much now let's keep listening But I did come over here with enough love in my heart and sincerity Thank you. to to say to you that all the things I said, which now I feel like but I meant them. You know I fucking meant them? Even though you fucking split, didn't come home. You know, I, I still I still did that. I fucking have shown myself, I've proven myself, I've fought for you, I've showed up. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation don't. with you. Then don't. You fucking hit me last night. You fucking... Or oh, all the other times you split. Hey, come on, you cannot act like that. It's about that. It's well, not... Well, on a plane, I can't split. Right, so... As you can see here, it's really her perception that he isn't uh, putting enough effort into the relationship or into resolving their fights because he splits in her in her words and here he says I'm not gonna be in a physical fucking altercation with you I I can try to censor myself but it's in the recording so it doesn't really matter at this point um, but he says I'm not gonna be in a physical altercation with you uh, which shows me that he really is trying to prevent these uh, fights from escalating uh, to that point well she is like no stay I mean f fight for us and don't leave and it seems to me like she doesn't really understand yet what his point is and that she sees his reason for leaving as a lot different than he does uh, so she she says well then don't be in a physical altercation and he's like you you fucking hit me last night uh, what, I, what I'm hearing is that he feels like it's it's not him she says then don't as if he's got the choice while he says well you fucking hit me last night like you made that choice you hit me uh, so the first little tidbit of gaslighting that I see here is that as soon as he mentions he hit me last night she changes subjects and we're gonna see that a lot more uh, what about all the other times you split like she talks over him and she doesn't get into that she hit him at all and she changes subjects a lot and I put that under gaslighting because uh, gaslighting can be seen as making someone doubt their reality or just their own sanity or putting other ideas into someone's head and changing not and not necessarily making them doubt it but also giving them another idea so in a very simple sense someone could say uh, yeah well I, I, I didn't close the door uh, too loud and someone else could say yeah you did it was way loud it was super loud and we keep emphasizing that and if you do that often enough and uh, hard enough then someone might start to believe those things so let's uh, let's continue no and you hit back so don't act like you don't fucking participate I pushed you I'm not gonna get into the details of that fight you and I both know that you split when there is no physical violence and that you do it and meet like at the very beginning of fights these days and if you split and you go into a different room and you don't actually leave that house it does nothing but perpetuate the fight 
and you don't actually do it respectfully, you don't do it in a way that actually means we won't fight, it always makes more fights, it always makes them longer, it never, ever makes you calmer. You never come out going, I want to talk, or I'm okay, or it's going to be okay. And I am a hundred, I'm sick and tired a hundred percent of being the only one that goes and fights for it. You know what that does? It demoralizes the, 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 the half of this relationship that is me. It demeans me, demoralizes me. So she keeps trying to somehow offload the the uh, responsibility or the accountability. Uh, like, oh, you hit back, so don't like like you don't participate. And he just corrects her like, I pushed you, like I didn't hit you, I pushed you. And then she's like, no, I'm not going to get into the details of that fight. She does it a lot. The, the whenever she is confronted with uh, her own accountability, she's like, no, that, I don't want to talk about that. Well, a second ago, she kind of did. So something else that we see happening here is uh, you and I both know that you split when there's no physical violence. That doesn't seem unreasonable to me. If you want to prevent it from becoming physical, that means that you leave before it gets physical, right? Seems kind of logical. And her perception uh, after that is that it doesn't do anything to actually solve the fights. So it's her uh, preference that he stays and that they fight it out. She says it never ever makes you calmer i i honestly doubt that but it wasn't there so i can't say but i doubt that uh you never come out going i want to talk or i'm okay or it's going to be okay maybe that happened maybe it didn't again i wasn't there uh, but something i'm not seeing again is her own accountability what about what she does in those fights She's all like, you split, you're never calmer, uh, you never come out going, I want to talk, or saying, I'm okay. But what if he leaves so that she can calm down? Which apparently also doesn't happen. She also equates staying with fighting for it. And as someone who's been in a relationship, who's been in a couple of arguments that thankfully have never become anywhere close to even verbally abusive, um... Sometimes when the emotions rise, you got to take some time to cool off because otherwise you're going to say or do things that you're going to regret. And that's perfectly fine as long as you communicate about it, as long as you just tell the other person like, hey, I feel like I'm getting a little bit too worked up and it's influencing my judgment. So if it's all right with you, I just want to take some time, maybe take a walk and Another thing that's very important in these cases is that you have sort of a game plan for what you do when you get back. Like, if you say, like, I'm just going to take a walk, and then when I come back, we'll finish talking about it. So that both people know what they're in for and what they can expect. Um, obviously, something is not really working in, in, in this relationship as far as that's going. So, let's continue. Yes, really. Really, when you split on me, how do you feel when I leave you? When I split, I've left when I go into the other room, you say. You leave how you get another room, you get a flight, when, things like that. And you when, asked me not to in is, Australia, and ever since no, then, how I've many, gone. how many, how many? I don't know, gone. I have to count them up. No, because I haven't left you, left you in a house, maybe twice, last, last night and another time. No, you've done it before, I've come here before. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, you've come here before, last time and another time, and then last time. You've done this several times, and and getting me rooms. a room, I mean, getting another room in a hotel is just the same thing. When did I get another room at a hotel? You uh, text Stephen or, or Nathan in Toronto to get you another room. It's chronic. It happens all the time. And if you do it to go into another room, you do it and you get dressed. You were fucking screaming at me. I'm not going to validate my actions last night. I feel very bad. No, I'm talking in reacted. Toronto. 
I did not start screaming until you had fucking said all the shit. You poke an animal enough, it is eventually, it doesn't matter how friendly it is, That's how not cool. true. Well, I it's the same for, for me. So right. Um, something else that, that we see here is that, again, he says, you were screaming at me. And then she's like, I'm not going to validate my actions last night. I feel very bad. It's, it's kind of dismissive in a way. Uh, he says, no, I'm talking in Toronto. I, I don't know what people prefer. Is it Toronto or Toronto? I, I have no idea. As you can hear, I'm not from any English speaking country. Uh, but then she says, I did not start screaming until you had fucking said all the shit. She keeps offloading that accountability. Like, yeah, even if she admits to it, she's like, yeah, I did start screaming, but that was because you started screaming. Or, you know, I got angry, but it's because you were poking the animal enough. And the thing is, it happens in relationships, and I don't mean just romantic relationships, in any relationship that you have with a friend, a colleague, a family member, or whatever. It's going to happen uh, that you run into problems, and that maybe someone provokes the other. And whatever you do, whoever provoked you, always take accountability for your actions. Sometimes people have annoyed me and provoked me to the point that I said something that I really regret it later. Uh, but I've learned not to say, well, yeah, that was just because you were provoking me. I've learned to say, like, yeah, the reason was that you provoked me, but I still said that. And that was still my action to take. And in those situations, it doesn't matter how hard it was for you to do something different because in theory, you always have a choice, but in practice, we don't always take that, that choice. Um, sometimes it's just very difficult not to do something. You are always the one who does your actions. No one is holding strings over you and playing you like a puppet. So even if someone makes you very angry with the things you said and you punch them, for example, and don't punch anyone, just for whatever reason. Don't punch people. Um, you, you're still the one who punched them. Even, if they, even if, if they provoked you. Now, if this is a matter of actual life and death and punching them is the only way to prevent you being murdered, then that's a whole other thing. But if it's just words, then the physicality has nothing to do with it. So, if someone provokes you to the point that you get either verbal, verbally or physically violent, it's still you doing that. And I fully understand that it's been made very difficult for you in that moment to do anything else because we're all human, we all make mistakes, that's, that's fine. But you can still admit to a mistake even if it's a human mistake to make. Precisely because it's a human mistake to make. And there should be no shame in that. So. If someone apologizes to you and says, well, I made a mistake, don't hound them. Don't start beating them down even more. If they come to you and they say, sorry, the best thing you can do is accept that apology. If they say, I'm sorry that I, I called you this and that, don't get angry with them even more. And like, yeah, you called me this and that. And you should say sorry because that was a bad thing to do because that's just going to discourage them from doing it next time. Something I really want to say is that apologizing should be met with positive reinforcement. That doesn't mean forgetting what happened. It means thanking someone. It doesn't mean that the problem is over. It doesn't mean that people can use an apology to just fix everything. Absolutely not. But at least meet them with something positive. And what I mean with that, apologies don't fix everything is that it doesn't really work if you go around punching people and then you just say sorry and then I punch you. Like you have to show some actual contrition and some awareness of why what you did was wrong. You can't just, I'm, I'm, I'm only using punching people because that's a, an, easy, uh, an easy concept instead of thinking of verbal examples, but you, you, you can't go around punching people and then punching someone and say sorry and then the other person is not gonna be, oh, okay, that's fine. No. So, enough of that digression. Uh, 
what I see is that Amber Heard is not taking enough accountability for uh, her own actions. And I'll say that so far, I've also not seen a lot of accountability from Depp's side, but he's not been accused of a whole lot of things that actually uh, ring true. And he's also not had a lot of uh, time to actually speak. So let's go on. Nope. It's the same and you me, kicked too. and kicked and kicked so bad. I have not done this to you. I have not said these things to you. Yeah. I have not started the fight by saying then I'm going to get in another room. And I'm not going to sit here and fight about fucking Toronto anymore. Guess what? I let it go. I'm not fucking about, I'm not fucking talking about Toronto. Send I can me the tapes. It. I can switch. It, it's stuff like this that makes it kind of evident to me that... Depp is not the main instigator here. Like, this is obvious, obviously just one isolated recording. It doesn't say anything about their entire lives together. But as far as this recording goes, she's definitely the one escalating. I mean, you can even look at the actual text on the screen. Like, Depp only has one line every now and then. And then her is just... She just kicks off. And... He's just trying to get a word in, and you'll notice his tone is still very calm, it's still very collected, and she just starts screaming at him. And I'm not talking about Toronto anymore, uh, and she says, guess what, I let it go. And that's also gaslighting to me, and the reason that I say that is gaslighting is because uh, it's a very common technique by people who are psychologically or, or emotionally abusive uh, to present themselves as the one with the moral high ground uh, and kind of use that to shift the focus of a conversation whenever it comes too close to them actually having to take accountability. Uh, so she has to take some kind of accountability for what she did in Toronto and then she's no like guess what I let it go like Look at me. I'm. I'm. I've got the high ground because I let it go. You should let it go. You're not letting it go. Should, so instead of just talking over that incident, instead of actually discussing it, she's implicitly shifting blame to him. Like, why can't you let this go? Well, maybe because it hasn't actually been processed by these two yet. Apparently, it hasn't. So they need to have a talk about it. And. She's presenting it like he doesn't let go, but she doesn't. She doesn't actually engage. She doesn't actually get into it. So, can you actually let something go before you've really talked about it like this? If something needs to be processed, I don't think so. I can write it. Guess what? I'm not saying another fucking word about Toronto. I'm so sick and tired of fucking fighting about old fights. This is not about a fight. This is broad. This is a broad thing. And if I'm telling you every single time you get dressed and you fucking split the top of a fight, you never fucking try and work it out. You never fight for me. You never come to me. You never self-calm. You never self-soothe. You're never the one to throw the olive branch. I'm sick and tired of it. It needs to fucking change. Well, um, it's kind of ironic to me that someone who is working themselves up because Depp is still very calm that she is getting more worked up and she's getting more angry and her tone is getting louder and she's she's becoming more aggressive in her intonation that she's the one to say you never self calm you never self soothe because in this moment just in this isolated moment she's not self calming either you can say self calm in a broader sense like when you have a fight and you go take a walk uh, to calm down, that's at a larger level, but at the smaller level within a conversation, you can also self-calm. And I believe that that is what Johnny Depp is doing, because he keeps bringing his emotions down. Even when he gets a little bit worked up, he keeps getting his emotions down. And she just keeps getting worked up. And I don't see her catching herself and stopping herself from getting so worked up. And obviously they haven't processed it yet and get saying, I'm so sick and tired of fighting about old fights. I've heard that kind of thing. And 
it's not it's 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 not good i mean if someone is if if something is processed and someone keeps talking about it then yeah they keep bringing it up but i don't feel like it's been processed between these two so it needs to be talked about again and maybe is tried to start up the conversation a lot of times and it's just kind of gone awry and then her perception is that he keeps bringing it up and that she's like no i've let it go while he's like well i still have a bone to pick that's still something i want to say about the situation and there's a mismatch between their perceptions and personally i i don't really want to say like he's always right in this and she's always wrong in this but it's clear that their perceptions don't match uh it's clear that they both have a different perception of what's actually happening hi this is me from the future only jumping in here to say that the video that i was recording ran kind of long so i'm gonna split it up into a couple of parts and uh i wanted to end the video instead of just cutting it so just so you know i'll be stopping here for this video uh and since this is my first video on youtube thanks so much for actually uh coming to view this i really appreciate it a lot i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that you enjoyed it enough to continue to the next video thanks